I decided to build a see-through intercooler for my Toyota Supra. In the first video, I build the intercooler, mount it, test it, but unfortunately, things didn't go so well when I tried to run only 15 pounds of boost. Now I'm back to upgrade it, strengthen it, and then hit the street to do a real test run with some boost. After that, I'm gonna get the car on the dyno, run some even higher, more serious boost to see what's going on inside of the intercooler when running higher boost pressures. Let's go. I'm all done modifying the see-through intercooler. I added supports on both ends of both tanks. I'm hoping that's gonna allow the intercooler to hold the pressure because each side of this tank at 15 PSI is holding back a thousand pounds of force. So it's quite a bit of force. I don't know for sure that it's gonna work, but if it doesn't work and it fails, it's gonna be quite a show. I'm fairly confident that this is gonna hold the pressure, but I am scared that it's gonna blow up under the higher boost. So I'm gonna take it easy on the way to AMS because if it does blow up, I want it to blow up on the dyno at AMS and not on the street. Here we go. So with this hub dyno, does the car still need to be strapped down? In some cases the front might, such as like super high horsepower cars. But does it need to be strapped down? No, not at all. Everything's ready to go? I wanna just start slow. I'm gonna start at the lowest boost and just start cranking it up, maybe just by throttle. We could just do a static RPM test, man. 5,000 RPM. That'd be a lot easier to control a boost throughout the run. Literally use your pedal or your foot to control the boost with the throttle. I'm actually done. I set up the RPM just now. So what he just explained and what that means is that no matter what we do, it's going to stay at 4,000 RPM. In this case, our throttle is going to be our boost controller because the load is going to stay the same the whole time. That's absolutely perfect. I'm going to start with a really low boost. Then I'm going to do the fog machine first in the air filter and then in the inlet of the turbo, which I think is going to look really cool. Then I'm gonna start cranking up the boost, I guess until it fails. You ready to go? Let's see what go. happens. All right, hit it. We're all done with that run and uh, I think it looked pretty cool. It was definitely cool how that air exited the tank on this side. But now we have a problem, of course. The tanks are starting to get kind of fogged up, probably with the glycerin that's in that fog juice. I know everybody's gonna ask me, what are you putting in there? What is that? This is food grade glycerin. The reason I'm making my own fog juice is not only because it's cheaper, but I'm making it more concentrated so we have a nice dense fog that goes into the turbo. 
it's one part glycerin to three parts water. That's regular fog juice. So I gotta figure out a way to clean those tanks before moving on and I think I have just the thing in mind. Wish I had a bigger hose. clearly see that this is the hot side and this is the cold side because look at how much more condensation is on this side that's pretty cool that means the intercooler is cooling down that air I'm just gonna wait for that to dry up clear up that worked out pretty well it took uh, almost a liter of water I don't know how many ounces was this 16 ounces it ate up and uh, it actually worked look at those walls of the intercooler it cleared things up really well so now we're ready for the next test aiming directly into the turbo let's go this is going to be 0.5 bar or 8 psi that was pretty cool I could totally see the condensation on the outlet tank right here on the high-speed camera we're gonna do it again this time we're gonna do about 15 to 20 psi and see what happens we got a temperature probe on the inlet side we're also putting a temperature sensor on the outlet if the intercooler is doing its job we should see a difference between the inlet right there and the outlet the main reason that we mounted the temp sensors right in that inlet like that so we have them right in the middle so that's measuring just the actual air it's not touching anything else which is really important because that's giving us the actual temperature of the air and only the air going in and coming out of the intercooler here we go this is going to be 15 to 20 psi got everything all set up high speed cameras rolling 15 to 20 psi four second pulls so that's a wrap that was a lot better than I thought it was gonna be we got to see the airflow and we got to see the flashing in one tank at least a little bit and one thing I did find really interesting was the temperature difference between the air going into the intercooler and the air coming out of the intercooler at one point it was 180 degrees going in and 70 something degrees coming out with no fan blowing on the intercooler just the air from the fans on the car that to me was uh, really surprising I didn't think that the intercooler was gonna work that well, but you saw it for your own eyes. Big thanks out to the guys at AMS for not only having amazing equipment, but also having the exact hub dyno that I needed to make this test a possibility. This is a little bit tricky to make it work on a traditional dyno, so big thanks out to them. Make sure you check out their YouTube channel. They have a ton of crazy car content. That's it for this see-through intercooler episode. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. That's a wrap. See you next time. And I just want to address why my car looks the way it does. And mainly because this is a street car. This is not a show car. I built this car to drive it on the street as my daily driver. I wanted a thousand horsepower daily driver that drove well, didn't stall out at stop signs. And uh, 
takes the beating, doesn't break down, and this is what I got.